Ed, 36 years running up and down the court, blowing that whistle, 12 Final Fours. And, you know, it's interesting when you think about all those great games, and we always hear about the perspectives from the players and from the coaches. Well, let's, let's hear from an official standpoint. You were in some of the most incredible moments on the court in college basketball history. Tell us about your emotions and, and all the things that you experienced, the adrenaline, everything. Well, first, uh, you could not become too emotional out there. You, there was a, there's an old adage that you, as the game becomes uh, more intense and emotional, that's when you have to pipe down and become less emotional. As people start to get out of control, that's when you need to be more in control. But it, it was a great, it was a great run. I had a lot of fun. Um, I've been very, very fortunate over the years to have had so much support from people throughout uh, the St. Louis area, particularly, and then all of my friends who are here tonight, uh, my family. Uh, um, I don't know what Barbara, my wife, is going to do. You know, we've been married. We'll be 40 years, and all of a sudden, I'm going to be around at home. But to do uh, 12 Final Fours, uh, I, I've been very, very fortunate. Uh, one of the more uh, exciting moments, or not so exciting moments, when I was the lead referee on the Michigan-North Carolina game, and the sixth timeout was called by Chris Weber. And uh, I've got to go over and... Uh, and adjudicate the rule and say that, guess what? Uh, it's gonna be a technical foul and you're gonna now lose the game in a national championship. Another situation, I was working uh, the Kansas uh, uh, Memphis game about six years ago, national championship, and you, you, you have the power to change the course of the game at any moment. And you, you have to use that power that you have judiciously. And I can remember as I went down uh, the stretch of the game, uh, Memphis had m missed about three or four key free throws, if you recall. Game went into overtime. And now all of a sudden, uh, the player from Michigan slams the ball, and it goes all the way to the ceiling, not upset with Ed Hightower, but do you call a technical foul? Now, common sense says no. The rule says no. You set aside the rule, you keep the game fair, and you give those individuals an opportunity to win the game. And that's what refereeing is all about. Yes. <laughs> and as beloved as you are in this area, when you put that uniform on, no one loves the man with the stripes. <laughs> you took a lot of abuse. How did you do it? Well, you know, taking abuse, gosh. I, I've taken abuse from my family, you know. <laughs> you know, the worst thing, uh, my two daughters, as they were growing up, you know, they were so concerned about, and by the way, they went to my, in my, went to my school district where I was superintendent, principal, and all. And, uh, you know, as they started to grow up, they were more concerned about, Dad, don't make a bad call because my friends are going to be watching <laughs> and they're going to be talking about it. Or, Dad, don't make a bad call because these boys won't talk to me. <laughs> you know, so, you know, you're talking about pressure. That's pressure right there, you know, not this other stuff. <laughs> and, of course, you know, you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Hall of Fame coaches, you know, Storm and Norman, Bob Knight. I'm sure there's once or twice you've heard the magic words. How did, what, what coaches just kind of made you chuckle? Not get mad, but just, what, what, what guys did you just say, hey, that's, you know, that's kind of funny? Well, you know, again, uh, I, I work more games for Coach Knight than any official in the history of the game. And, you know, you know uh, some of the things that he would say at times, it was just hilarious, <laughs> really. And some of the things he would say would not be so hilarious. But he was one of the greatest coaches and a guy that was absolutely great for the game. One of the funniest things that happened with, uh, occurred with University of Oklahoma playing Missouri when Billy Tubbs uh, went to the microphone and said, uh, it doesn't matter how bad the officiating is tonight, don't throw the debris onto the floor. <laughs> and that was the night when Norm Stewart got sick flying to the game. 
Norm kits me to this day that if he would have been at that game, then both he and Billy would have been expelled from the game because he would not have allowed Billy Tubbs to upstage him that night. <laughs> so uh, that's Norm's assessment of how the game uh, was called that night. And you know, again, you know, some of the things uh, I can remember. I was I was doing a game in Kevin O'Neill, and most of you uh, know Kevin O'Neill. He's coached at Marquette, Northwestern, uh, USC, Tennessee. He's been everywhere. Well, uh, when I got my doctorate degree from St. Louis University, I got ready to to go out, and and uh, he's of course coaching at Northwestern. How do you use? profane language at Northwestern. But Kevin had one of the filthiest mouths in the, in, in the game. So I'm getting ready to toss the ball as referee. And he said, hold it, uh, uh, Mr. Ref. He says, uh, I don't throw that ball up. He says, I, I need clarification on a rule. And uh, he called the other coach down. And he said, he said, I'm not going to cause any trouble. Now, he said, I just need clarification. So I knew that was the first sign he was going to cause problems. So lo and behold, I walked over, and he said, he looked at me. He says, what am I supposed to call you tonight? Doctor? MF? <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? You know, you hear those kinds of things, and all you do is laugh, you know. Uh, you know, it's just some of the things that coaches say uh, in the game. And uh, one of the great coaches of all times right now and, and, and does so much for uh, the game, one of my favorite people, Tom Izzo from uh, Michigan State. There is a guy there that gets it. Uh, he's incredible as far as what he gives to young people and he makes the game better. So the game has been much better to me than I could have ever been to the game. And I've been successful because of so many people pulling, cheering, supporting, and uh, saying that uh, uh, you can do it. So I've been very fortunate. <laughs> Ed, you had an, a distinguished career. We are all proud of you. And we want to congratulate you and welcome you to the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. Thank Ed you. Hightower, everybody. Thank you.